Welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Social distancing. Into this edition of Road Trip, and I'm your host, Allie Clifton. Richard Jefferson, he's the creative director of Bleacher Report. <laughs> That's the... Um, his name is <laughs> Dwayne Wade. Oh, that yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and I know that it... No, it's not just the three of us. We could never leave out our Yes, guy. we could. We, yeah. actually, yeah. 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 we yeah. actually could. We fine. actually could. We could? We could. We could. There's Chatty. Hey, bud. There he is. Uh, what's going on, guys? Happy Thursday. Where are you at in the world? In my house, in an office, ducking my children. Yeah, father of the year, I see. <laughs> father of the year. They're at school anyway. They're at social distancing school, so this is work. Daddy got to work today. Daddy got to go downstairs and drink wine. Chinning, I know you're... you're... R&D, R&D. <laughs> Do you what know what R&D &D says? No. What is <laughs> Her face turns side, research and development. Research and development, yeah. R&D. Oh, that's boring. Marquette's not too good. Yeah. What do you mean it's boring? This is the greatest job in the world. Did you just take a shot Marquette? at Marquette? I heard it on your breath. Don't do that. <laughs> what did Fine he say? institution, sir. What did he say? He I don't know. He I heard him on his breath say something about Marquette. <laughs> that's all right. What'd you say, that's Channing? Right. I said they don't teach those type of things at Marquette. <laughs> Market uh, research. Forget market all that research. R whatever you said. Well, one one person here is a creative director and one person isn't. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> and, yeah. and if you I'm only a creative director of my Instagram, <laughs> listen. No, you're I, not. I heard Kevin Hart in his new yeah, stand up actually... really talk about him being dumb and how successful dumb has been for him. Yeah. And it works. So you could be smart all you want. I take dumb if it's gonna make me successful. <laughs> listen, look. <laughs> I'm not. Look, I think dumb is. I think I think dumb has worked out for a lot of people. A lot. a lot of people. I think dumb has worked out more than really being really really smart. Raise really. your hand if dumb has worked out for you. <laughs> it's Channing. Oh, no. there we go. Yes. My, my dad used to call yeah. us super stupid when we were young. I never heard of it before, wow. but he used to Man. say y'all are super, super stupid. stupid. I was like, how you get super <laughs> stupid? But now, as you got older, as you got older, you understand it, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, you have those young boys come on in the team. They're like, how's the rook? He's like, man, he's super stupid. Like, he's super stupid. He's like, super. He's like, but we try and tell him what to do and, and try and help him out and guide him. And he's just like, no, I'm going to do it a, a stupid way, like a right. super stupid like, way. You ain't never seen it done that way. No, yeah. yeah like, yeah. you've been in the league 13 years. I'm going to do something. You ain't never seen before. <laughs> it's like, but no, yeah, that's 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 super stupid. Before people uh, claim us as the super stupid clan, yeah. um, we don't like to use Dwayne, the word clan around Dwayne. here. <laughs> oh, Allie. <laughs> don't edit that. <laughs> don't edit. it. That's just funny. That's just funny. We just. Okay, Dwayne, what's going on in your? <laughs> now you guys are all messed up for that. Y'all are super stupid for that. <laughs> there super we stupid go. For that. There we Dwayne, go. Uh, before, we have so much to talk about. We talked about, like, there's so many directions that we could go and mm -hmm. talk to you. So okay. we want to hit the nuts and bolts first. The more, nets you know, bolts current, bolts. what's going on in the world. The Miami Heat okay. just won a championship. Do you get a ring? What champ, huh? No, oh, they did win a championship. <laughs> <laughs> Super stupid. <laughs> Super, see, we got a rattle. We got a rattle right now. You know, let me tell you, that's that Shannon Blanc. That's that Wade Wine. Everybody. Is that Wade that's Wine? You, oh, okay. Right okay. Now. They, got her they did not. Okay. They did not. She forgot her. I actually, I actually work for the Lakers, so it was kind of it. But you didn't Lakers pick up we're on that. in the Laker building right now. <laughs> right. And she's it's like, so the, the, the Miami go. Heat just Here won a championship. Do you get a ring? But do you get a ring if when when the Heat do win their next championship? Uh, I don't know. Well, y'all asking me like I'm. I have some. I don't sense. because every time we hear about the Miami he Heat, we hear about LA. it's like it's like the middle name. Jimmy told me at some point in the bubble he was gonna get me a ring. That was way before that. He yeah, did. yeah. That was like before the playoffs started. He oh, was he like, thought Yo, you wanted these rings, ring, to like Uber rings to kill yeah. your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about the ring you got for the Cavs? That's all you was doing yep. was sleeping. Oh no! I saw my I iPad sleepy out, out there. <laughs> I saw my iPad from the Cavs. What you mean? Yeah, well, I'll they gave, they gave us an iPad like for all of our playoff stuff. Like, oh, yeah, like yeah, Richard, yeah. what? Do you still have it too, Channing? <laughs> you still have it? <laughs> yo, Channing still got yo, the iPad. Look at look at look at that. What 
the chances. Yo, you supposed to get that back. No, no, no. 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 no what do you that's mean got, it's a fine? Yo, that's got Miami, data. That's a fine. No, that's well, got data. Well, of course data. it is. No, not when you trade, not when they trade me because of you. <laughs> we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. Thanks, Ann. No, Thanks. let's just get there now. No, please, let's just get there now. Yo, seriously, though, that's the exact same thing. It's got data. That's why you can't give Bro, it back. Let me tell you what I still have, okay? <laughs> In 2010, I don't know if they started it then, but in 2010, through free agency, they yeah. gave out iPads. That was like the big thing. Like, they'll show up to your house, whatever team that was recruiting you, yeah. and they'll leave an iPad. Yeah. I still have all the iPads. Oh, as you should. Yeah. As you should. I still have all of them. Mine has the what? data so I can stream movies on it, and I'm like, <laughs> they're like, you've exceeded your data. It's like, don't care. <laughs> you know how many people would literally die for an iPad? And you guys are just. Whoa, oh. whoa, 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 whoa. An iPad Pro. <laughs> Right. Um, can we Listen, can we travel they back? My stuff off, and I called them and say, like, "Hey, yo, you can't turn this off." Did I they, turn this. <laughs> they turn it off? Yeah, they turned turn my data off. I called them like, "Hey, yo, come on, I still need this. Like, I might come back. Obviously not. I'm up here watching Hulu, Netflix, <laughs> Amazon Prime, right? okay. what everything." Okay, so at one point in time, we all were together. That was what 2017, yeah, 2018 mm -hmm. in the fall when you walked into that training camp in Cleveland, and these two were there. <laughs> what went through but your first mind? First of all, Richard didn't even, he was in training camp, but he wasn't doing nothing. Well, like, no, no, he no. Wasn't, Richard wasn't doing nothing in training camp, and Jenny neither. Neither one of these guys were doing anything in training camp, especially Richard, though. I've no. never seen nobody stretch on the sideline for <laughs> versus Richard and to not play. He didn't even get in practice. No, I, you know what it is? I learned I learned it probably around, around year 13. Now, it's different when, I, like, I know the difference between, like, Miami, San Antonio, like, places that, like, are really watching. But once I got there, I learned that, like, I only have to jump in, jump in the drill one time per right, right. whole thing. Oh, you get smarter as yeah, you get older. Yeah, as oh, you get sure. older, you get smarter. It's like if, not, like, if you're doing the running drills or whatever, but if you're doing, like, defensive drills, as long as I get in one time, mm -hmm. I'm good. Because then the coach can see they saw me, yeah. like, other players saw And when you get me. in, you got to be loud, too. You yeah. got to be oh, talking. Oh, oh, let's go. Let's super go. loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then go sit. That's what yeah. they did. The whole training camp, these two right <laughs> here. One drill per. Per. Hey, that's it. That's it. That's hey, all you got to do. Every time, I would be like, hey, hey. Uh, Tristan, let me come get you. He'd be like, hell no. I said, all right, next one. Because <laughs> guys don't never want to come out neither, especially no. when you're no. I'd yeah. be like, cool. Oh, I, t I, I was cool. You know what it was, though? Like, I remember when you remember this, too. When we were all younger players, we used to step in and help the vets out. But, yo, yo, I got this. Get out. Just, yeah, yeah, get out. Sure. I mean, look, because we're bored when you're 25. You, know, you want to run more. So you're like, ah, here, just get out. I got you. I got you. Oh, th thanks, young fella. And then <laughs> I expect, I'm not asking, I expect right. the younger players to do it. Like, hey, just just oh, come get me. Oh, Eddie Jones would, like, Eddie Jones would just put, you had to go. Like, Eddie Jones would, like, He'll sit in line. We'd be doing the running drill. You'll come back. The shoe. And he'd be like, yo, go again. You need to get in shape. You need to get in. Like, he would just be sitting chilling. I was yeah. like, that's when I get a vet, when oh, I become a vet, yeah. I'm going to do the same thing. Speaking of getting in shape, we need to bring up this. Um, but I first want, you just gave your observation of Richard. He wasn't doing no. in training camp. No. What was Channing doing? Shit. Same thing. Same? Yeah, they weren't doing shit together. We were, we were, we were, we were in comic I relief. 20 miles a day. Two okay, so speaking pie. of miles, did you guys know that there's someone on this podcast right now that used to tape their Apple Watch on their wrist during games to count steps. Channing. Channing. <laughs> Channing. Yes, Channing. <laughs> it has to be Channing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean, were I you that desperate? No, but I was so bored. So my mind, I'd be like, all right, if I'm not going to play, I was warming up dumb hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was, <laughs> play of then I was doing lifting, and I was just staying in shape and keeping my mind ready because I was like, Okay, Tristan got to play. Kevin got to play. Braun got to play. Jeff Green got to play. All these people got to play. I didn't play really until we won 20 in a row, and then they traded me. And so let's see how that goes. But, <laughs> like, I really didn't play till a bunch so of guys you got still hurt. feel the way about that trade. I see. I do. I, I was not very happy. Up next on Road Trippin'. Once you get to the end of your career, you got to be honest with yourself. Okay, yeah. where am I at with my talent? Right yeah, now. like Danny Green. <laughs> D Wade, the funniest thing about his time in LA, the, the entire, there are two, a couple of funny jokes that we told. The two weeks he was there. The two yeah. weeks he was there. One of Here. them was like, you know, Luke Walden, head coach at the time, he was like, hey, because they played together at Arizona. So he was like, hey, Channing, just, you know, when we're around the young players, I just need, you know, I know we're boys and all, but I need you to do it. I was like, cool. 
He said, like, the second video session, he walked in, Lukey Dukey, what's up? What's up? And then Luke, Luke just looked at him like, that is this so tennis. is, dude. And it's like, because you know him, you can't be mad at him, but you're just like, God. all the all the young boys were looking at him, Lukey Dukey. Lukey Dukey, okay. what's up? Okay. Yo, listen, here's the problem. I got there, and I played, but I was like, yo, I'm hurt, so let me figure this out. And then... It was just like we were like five games from the playoffs, and I said, "Oh, this is it. We ain't gonna make this. Like based on this, right? We ain't making this." Yeah. And so me, I went in a full like, "Here you go, guys." Like Larry, you know, um, Rob Brook Lopez was gonna play. Uh, Julius Randall was gonna play, and so I was like, "Okay, this is young fella time." Every team that I've been on that wasn't gonna make the playoffs is young fella time. So I basically was like, "All right, y'all go ahead. Just let me know where you need me." Zubac was gonna play. So I was way down the list. So why does it, seem, why does it seem like you're way down the list on every team you're on? That's like the second time you've done that lineup. Uh, I mean, basically, my whole career I played behind an all-star. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, look, buddy. <laughs> buddy. I'm a specialist, and that special is did not include defense, right? <laughs> so <laughs> my job. Oh, cheating. Listen, and I said this. This is a stat. While I played for the Cavs, this is the least amount of double teams in the history of Cavs uh, history. The history of Cavs history? <laughs> <laughs> you drew the least amount of double teams? No, you... there was no double teams. You couldn't double team. We absolutely punished them. Three-pointers, layups, <sighs> floor spaces, everything. It should be a stat. As D-Wade, we rejuvenated his career. We put him <laughs> on that block, right? We put him on the block. We won a... Uh, tw- we won 20 out of 22 games, D-Wade. We ran one play. We threw it to you if there was a little guy. And if there was a big guy, we'd do that little <laughs> curl play for Jeff to get a little right-hand boom or Kyle Corver to get a three. Or you would just shoot your turn around <laughs> shoulder. And it worked. We figured it out. We figured it out. You 100% correct. And then we got traded. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we, got we, were, we were best team in the NBA. The next thing you know, we lost two in a row. Hey, we got hey, traded. Hey, Channing, at least you made it. Channing, at least you made it. To uh, to play games because basically D Wade came in and I'm not gonna lie this was really funny right we were all having fun we were having a great time and I remember talking to Ali a bunch of that I, uh, when you came in and I was like oh dope D Wade and I started looking around and I started I was like <laughs> I called my agent and I was like hey something ain't adding up here <laughs> I was like I was like something ain't adding up here I was like we got a lot of roster spots. And, you know, the crazy thing that that it wasn't, obviously, I understood. Like, we've been doing this business for long enough. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, this going to suck, right? And the funny <laughs> thing about it was that I had, David Griffin was the GM at the time. And he was like, Richard, if you come back on a, after we won the championship, if you come back on a minimum salary, I'll keep you on a minimum salary forever. He, he was like, I'll have you be the Udonis Haslam. You can stay here till you're 47. I, I don't care. And I was like... Nah, that's not going to be good enough. I see this salary cap going up. You got to give me a little bit more. So they gave me a little bit more. But boy, did that screw them when it came to the tax? Because it was like, oh. all, I kept seeing like reports like, yes, by trading Richard Jefferson, they would save $12 million. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not $12, yeah. I'm not $12 million good right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you got to know it. That's the thing. You got to know. Once you, in the, in, once you get to the end of your career, you got to be honest with yourself. Okay, yeah. where am I at with my talent? Right yeah, now? like Danny Green. Like oh. Danny Green ain't unpacked. He ain't done nothing. I'm not trying to be mean to Danny. I'm saying I had the same thing happen. I got, I left the team that we won a championship. I was like this leading scorer off the bench in the finals. Then the next, the next year, uh, D Wade comes in, and it was like even though that I had performed and done my job, like for numbers and and roster and salary cap reasons, they traded me to Atlanta. I laughed at them and said I ain't coming. And then after that, I went to Denver. So it was I like think Bron felt. Bron. He was fine. He had Bro- his uh, boat buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you call him? His boat buddy? Boats. What is, what is he? Is he saying? He's saying boat. He, we're, uh, this is, this is, is your guy. This is your guy. This I, is, I, can't, I can't hear here, him. I can't my, hear him. But. Boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't, oh. you didn't want to leave Miami. You didn't want no. like, but sometimes like business is business. I didn't want to leave Chicago. Yeah. But they traded Aww. Jimmy and business was business. Business I, was business. I, actually, I'm from Chicago. I enjoyed my one year there and I was looking uh, forward to the second Suburbs. Year. <laughs> what? <laughs> because, You're from the suburbs. 
Uh, okay. You're right. You're right. <laughs> don't, hey, don't let the private school mess with you. You're right. It okay. doesn't matter. Even if you, you're right. as, like, he went to private school, prep school. Like, don't let him fool you. I did not go to prep school. It was a, it's a college pre preparatory. Preparatory? Okay, yeah, Dwayne. Obviously, they didn't prepare you to speak. No, I didn't go there. That's why. <laughs> I couldn't afford I, it. Allie, how do you ever get any work done? I don't. With these two. This is where I need to, like, step this is, up and this play is, my role. This is the work. Y'all should it do a Beavis work. and Butthead like remake. Or like, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we hey, creative too. director. Creative director, what is it? come yeah. on. I got you up. Okay. Back yeah, yeah, to yeah, it, yeah. creative director. Okay, yeah. so you're a creative director. You're. I got uh, a lot of titles, Ali. Don't tell us them all. Let's, let's get into it. They don't it. mean nothing. They just titles. Uh, okay, no. I, I don't. <laughs> I actually do not believe that for a second because you have a game show. I do. I do. Did you know that, Channing? Oh. What is this? What is this? <laughs> tell us. Tell us about Let's it. Let's talk First about... of all, you're going to be the... It better not be no Connect Four junk, either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a game show. So, all right. So and okay, if you okay, say whatever. that he's about to be on it, I'm... No, he's going okay. to be he's going to be a, he's going to be sitting on the couch with some wine with his kids around watching the game show when they come out. That he's that kind of he's a game show dude. Look at him. Is it on cable? That's what happens when you live <laughs> yep, in Portland, on Oregon. Cable. What show? TBS. It's going to be it'll be on TBS. Ah. It's called The Cube. You've never seen it cuz it's, it's the first the time you've done it here. Yeah. Okay. So, okay let me okay. tell you about okay. the game show. Please. All right. So the Go. game Go. show has been in the UK for now 12 years. Oh. And Warner Media who, you know, I'm a part of, they adopted it here. They want to bring it to the states. And uh, we already had conversations about me possibly hosting a game show. So when the conversation came to me, it was like, hey, it'll be in L.A. You know, you can go do a couple hours hosting and come back get home. Get out of the house. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? I get out the house for a couple hours. I can come home, see the family still. Cool. Then COVID happened, and it changed everything. So mm. we ended up shooting it in Atlanta um, for 10 days. And I had uh, 16 hour days. Woo! <laughs> and you did multiple every episodes every multiple, day. I, I had to try to get sleeping. at least three episodes a show. But I'm the host. I'm also doing the promos. I'm also doing like I'm doing everything. So I was like, oh, I th this is training. I felt like I was in training camp all over again. <laughs> but I you're was, the creative director. Don't you get to choose? No, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, none of that. I'm, I am not. I'm just the host, and I, I and I EP'd it, and I end up being the host. But like for me, it was fun. Like I I grew up on game shows, like in Chicago. One of my favorite game shows is this show called The Bozo Show. And I used to watch it oh, every morning before terrible. I went to school. And, like, the one thing on The Bozo Show, they will put, like, mm, five or six um, buckets. And you had to, you know, hit a ball in mm -hmm. each bucket. And that last bucket was the money bucket. And I always, like, I always used to think, like, one day, I'm going to get on this show, and I'm going to change my family's life. <laughs> I'm going to change my family life. <laughs> from, from The Bozo <laughs> that, Show. Yeah. And, like, full circle. I'm on the show, and I'm hosting the show to be able to um, – Change people's lives. You can, on our show, you can win up to two hundred fifty thousand know? dollars. Oh my so god, amazing! A lot amazing. of money. Yeah. To play uh, seven games. Well, to win seven games. If you win seven games on our show, you get to win two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Do you put up your own money? No, no, that's that's net. Like the way my bank account is set up from retiring, <laughs> I'm on a budget. <laughs> Boy, you better stop okay. it right now. So, are you on a budget? Hell yes, I'm on a budget. Why? Well, why can't you on a budget? You yeah. on a budget? Listen, you're ju you got vice president. I'm working. I'm working president. nine to fives. I'm I'm making frappuccinos. <laughs> Dom, all you gotta do, honestly, this is what you need to do: get dressed up. Like, tell Lauren to get dressed up. Take her out to a nice dinner and just ask her to increase your allowance. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Chani, were you one of those guys that, uh, I feel like we interviewed Chani, by the way. Chani, were, you, were you one of those guys that when you got your NBA check, you gave it to your wife and she gave you some money and said, go have fun? Nah, hell no. And she took the rest? Hell. Yeah. Hell. She's like, uh, make it work. She's like, hell. make it work. This ain't enough. First of all, let's put a little bit more respect on Lauren's name. Lauren's the yeah. boss. Lauren's the boss. Yeah. 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 Lauren's respect. the boss. As much as we're joking, we're just saying, like, yo, right. that's you a strong, awesome boss. woman that Channing has. Based on my wine budget. I definitely, definitely do my own stuff. <laughs> oh, right? Because I've been getting yelled at every month. Like, Channing, how much do you need to spend on wine? R and D. Research, Research and develop. develop. I got it. That's There's one thing you want to take away from this Channing episode. That's one thing in the wine industry is R and D. R &D. That's the one thing you've learned so far. Up next on Road Trippin', was there a moment during filming this game show that, like, for us to all hold on to? Like a little teaser? Okay, so from the Bozo, the game show, what it's called Cube? <laughs> it's called The Cube. The Cube. Yeah, it's called The Cube. Cube, and it's coming out when? Uh, I don't know the exact date, but somewhere in the middle of next year. Middle okay. of next year? Yeah, middle of next year. How many year. episodes? Uh, I filmed, I don't know how many they're going to end up showing, but I filmed 19 episodes. 
in Damn. 10 days. Wait, now, so if you filmed, then you have all of those contestants, right? Yeah. They can so you chop them give them together. I mean, they? it just depends. You know, it's a show. So they got to, you want to put your best shows forward. Okay. You know, all shows, just because I filmed 19, I mean, all of them was good. So it came out. <laughs> it takes a while. Yeah, you know what I mean? So they got to go through it and, you know, put it together. They're going to they gonna make it look nice and neat. But I filmed 19 episodes in 10 days and I was like, oh, so this is what retirement is really like. This is what work is really like. Really work, actual work. This not, is what actual work is really like. I just got to keep my body tight. <laughs> you just got to yeah. keep it strong. And I was like, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Before we move on to the wine collaboration, um, you obviously have your bottle of wine. Channing his, has his newest bottle of wine. You see it right there. Um, I do want to ask, can you give like a little snippet? Like, was there a moment during filming this game show that like for us to all hold on to? Like a little teaser? Like something that was really awesome? Like a moment? Well, it, it was awesome. The, the thing that's awesome about it is, yeah, it's a game show. It's simple games. So the name of the show is The Cube. So everything happens in The Cube. It's a glass cube and all these games happen. So Richard, here's a game. Um, you know, I get on this end, turn my back, and let's say you are a bucket. Yeah. I got to throw it backwards and make it in the bucket. Yeah. Okay. If you make it, one of those. you win. Right? Okay. You move on to the next round, which yeah. is, that means money. If you miss it, you lose a life. Okay. okay. You get nine lives in these games. So okay. you miss it, now you got eight lives. Okay. Uh, but you can't come, once you go in the cube, you can't come out. So you can burn all nine lives trying to Trying to get back, that one thing. Right? Ooh. So it's a simple game, but it's a hard game because, you know, it's, it's easy to throw it backwards and miss it. So... What, being a part of it and watching these families and like them coming on with their stories and their reasons why being on the show and what they wanted to do. A lot of people wanted to, you know, enrich the communities. They wanted to, you know, some people living the way they were living, you know, obviously COVID has, you know, struck the whole world. So you get to know their backstories as well. And then, you know, you understand that, okay, this money is important, you know, for so many other reasons. So to watch a family win $50,000, you know, on a show, I mean, tears. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, I saw, and it gets you emotional. You get invested into their story. Did and you cry? Time. I didn't cry, but you know, inside I was cried. warm and fuzzy. I was warm. I understand. <laughs> you know I mean? understand. But the one thing I did learn about this show uh, with Americans is we go for it every time. <laughs> They'd be like, "Okay, listen, okay, this game that's next, right? Let's say it's a game that's coming up next, and this game on average takes five lives to beat on average. You got two. You got two lives, and you got twenty thousand dollars. You can walk away right now with twenty thousand, or, or you, you can get go inside that queue and try to play for fifty thousand. And I'm sitting there like they about to walk away and take the money. They be like, we gonna go inside the queue. I'm like, no. <laughs> wait, 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 no. wait, 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 wait. Now, now. I, we're not gonna turn this into a ethnic racial thing. <laughs> <laughs> but what if we were to break it down from like from like demographics? Let's just say demographics. Was there one demographic that was more apt? to like, we're going for it versus, yeah. oh, no, we taking this money. Yeah, the alley de demographic this was more like, we're going like, for it. Yeah. What? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'm just saying. The, yeah. the, you know, my, our demographic was more so like, you know what? Hey, I could do a lot with 20,000. I could do a lot, a lot with 20,000. 20, <laughs> <laughs> I could do a lot with 20,000 too, but why not? Yeah, I'm see, exactly. I like to live on that's what I'm saying. You know what my you know, mama would have said to me? You know what people I watch, like, I mean, it's a great show. You know what I mean, people, I, I, you know what? I hate when people do this. I hate when people do this, when they put this back in the refrigerator, when it's like, you know, a little orange juice left. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this. <laughs> it's gonna say, yeah. it's yours. Yeah, you brought it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so I just did that, and so it was cool. You know, when you retire, as we all know, when you retire, you try to find, like, something that's, like, you try to find your lane. Like, all right, what am I going to be good at? What can I be good at? Uh, where, where is someone going to pay me? Um, but also, too, like, you try to find something that gives you, like, some joy, yeah. you know? So for me, like, to host that show, like, even though it was hard, and I gotta we gotta talk about the schedule that they put me through. But overall, <laughs> like I would do it again if the schedule was right, because like it was fulfilling and was rewarding to watch like these families like win this kind of money, you know, on this show. So it was cool. So Jim, what, you got right. Oh no, no, no. I was gonna say it's like obviously God rest his God rest his soul, but Alex Trebek and like Pat Sajak and Steve Harvey and all these guys, that's basically what they do. They like people don't understand. They record for like a week. They record like an entire season of Family Feud in like a week yeah. and they just like change their outfits and they have like 12 hour days. Mm -hmm. But you really, you make a, a uh, I don't know about your situation, but like those, though, like Alex Trebek making $15 million oh, yeah, to work yeah. like two and a half weeks and do some yeah. promos. If, you know, it's a good gig if you I mean, get I, it. Yeah, I'm not there yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is my first time out the back. Yeah. So my, my money wasn't like that, but. It's, it is something great, and it's something like with, you know, with the Cube because it's been successful in the UK for 12 years. So you know, obviously, everybody on our team is like, listen, you know, we got an opportunity with a great show. Hopefully, we can get 10 years out of this. Yeah. You know, and build, you know, and build really build an empire, you know, for this show in the states. So 
We'll see. We'll yeah. see how it goes. Like, you know, like I told them, I said, I had an amazing time, but like, we definitely got to talk on the schedule, schedule because I ain't built for it. I ain't built for 16 hour days. Did you ever have a moment About where you eight. walked in and you were like, do y'all know that I'm Dwayne Wade? No. Like, uh, first of all, know. I was nervous as, as, as hell, first of all, to do something like that. You know, you, you know can I mean? cuss. <laughs> <laughs> just out of nowhere just, in the middle listen, of your story. Right, my mama might watch. You know what I mean? Let me, let me limit my cursing, all right, Channing? <laughs> You sit down in the basement that where you was put. That's rodeo on road tripping. That's why they put you in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lauren, Lauren has the key, too. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren has the key. She put the fool by the door. Yeah, she put the, <laughs> she, she makes him quarantine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I quarantine 16 hours a day by myself. I just get to sleep on the couch. R&D. R&D. <laughs> so it was hard? <laughs> No, it was, yeah, no, it was hard. I ain't even lie to you. You know what I mean? Like getting off. I mean, but obviously, it's to be successful in sport. We had yeah. moments where it was hard. So it was just hard because I've never done it before. But you know, once I got done, I felt accomplished. Like ten days on the grind to get a show done. Like I said, we filmed nineteen shows in ten days. Like I felt accomplished. Walked yeah. away from there with my head up high, my feet hurting. Yeah, <laughs> what, <laughs> it was hurting. What, what was the hardest part? Reading a prompter. Like what? Like was that? Because yo, that's something that even like. For me, I've been two years out, and yeah. I've been in that in the space of like learning how to read a prompter, yeah. different, you know, whether it's hosting something or just like doing my own stuff. Like you're trying to be expressive and read, and like not like like sit there and focus. What was the hardest part? That was like a random skill that you now have a tremendous amount of respect for people that are in that space. Yeah, you said it, man. It's like, all right, so hosting is cool. Like, once you learn the game, you you know the rules and everything, you mm -hmm. can be personable with someone you can host. That's that's not easy, but that's cool. It's the, once the show over, okay, Dwayne, now the contestant just left, we need you to read 30 things to camera. We need you to turn like this, you know, watch them go out and now look at the camera and say, blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. Ali and Richard are to have $20,000. Where they go for, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. kind of read. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, we need more energy. Or we need this to be dramatic. Or we need, I'm like, I am not an actor. <laughs> okay. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm like, a creative director. I am not. Yeah. So <laughs> like that was tough. And it would be like in between hosting shows, be like, okay, we got to get 50 reads. You know, like all this stuff. Yeah. that I was like, oh, you know, I didn't pay attention to the fine print. Because I don't remember seeing that I was gonna have to do 50 reads between each show, but it was like it was, but it was challenging, and you know, like everybody there was working longer hours than me. You got people who setting up early and they yeah. staying later, so we were all like pushing through together. It was like really like a family, you know. Yeah. I get it, like when people say it felt like a family, even though we couldn't touch each other, <laughs> it felt like a family. We're like, listen, guys, listen, we on the 16th hour, my toes probably bleeding, but we about to get through this. Would you see? You got it. You you didn't switch up your shoes. You it didn't, didn't like, even matter if you stand, just up that stand up that long, long. Your feet start pulsating. Oh my! I, I still ain't got the feeling back on my big toe on my right side yet. <laughs> Talk but to I, me when you're wearing four inch heels and you do it for six, seven hours. Okay. No, I can't. No, we'll talk about it. Yeah. So, are better than what are those um, things? Could, what are new balances? I, I, what are you talking about? We're talking about, Channing. Can someone, can, that's these, that's you these, say? Oh, that's these Jimmy Butlers. That's these Lee Nings. You know you, what I mean? That's you the had Jimmy. the audacity <laughs> to rock Jimmy Butlers in the Lakers studio. Up next on Road Trippin'. You got these young guys that you're trying to take to NBA Finals versus LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And Jimmy, like that is, I, I respect that relationship, but it's like you bring him over to Lee. I'm not saying you, like obviously Lee Ning and the Miami Heat, yeah. but like you. The ones who pay him, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> the ones that are paying him. But not, okay, let's then let's talk about that. Cause I think that's that that's really, really dope in the sense that like it seems from a distance, and I'm gonna ask from like a fan standpoint of like you guys have a great relationship. He tries to credit you whenever he gets that opportunity. He was he talks about how instrumental you were to bringing him to the heat and really expressing to him is like, dude, I know your personality and how you compete. The Miami Heat is the organization you've been like searching for for yeah. the last bit. Like, what does that mean to you? Like, how did you guys establish that relationship? Yeah, I mean, you, Jenny, and you know, Richard, you understand this. When you come into the league or at some point in your career, if you have a great vet, it changes your life. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, it changes the way you look at life. It changes the things you do. So when I went to Chicago, um, you know, me and Jimmy latched onto each other right away. Obviously, we had a Marquette tie in the background, but we wasn't close. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I would go back at the time, I would play with those guys, but like we wasn't really close. And he played with the Bulls, and we had that Bulls Miami yeah. thing going on. But when I went there, uh, me and Jimmy got close, and Jimmy just was like, "Yo, I want to learn everything I can." 
and I gave Jimmy the game, right? Yeah. Everything I've learned from the vets before me, everything I learned from my experience, me and Jimmy sat down, and I just, I got into Jimmy. I got, I got, I started to understand who he was. He wanted to play dominoes, let's play dominoes. Yeah. You want to drink Hendrix? Okay, I don't drink it, but <laughs> drink let's drink gin? it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> whatever mean? Jimmy was into. Ooh. Devil's piss right there. Right, but we did it, and I, and oh, I got to know Jimmy, and bad. I got to know not what he bad. wanted for himself. And what he wanted was the same thing that I was doing. You know what I mean? He's like, I was like, what, what do it look, what do success look like for you? He was like, <laughs> I said, right, well, here you go. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then to his credit, man, obviously he's he's doing it his own way, but you know he's taking some of the similar steps that I that I've done. And if it ain't broke, don't don't fix it, right? He he has a blueprint of somebody that he you know can say that is a friend and a, and a brother. And you know he's he's blazing his own trail, but he's following a path that seems successful. Mm -hmm. And so I'm I'm happy for him, man. He's you know he got into a great place with Miami. Um, you know, I love Jordan Brand. He loved Jordan Brand to sign with Lee Ning, and yeah. I signed with Lee Ning, and end up good for me. You know, mm -hmm. and so hopefully he has the similar success that I've had, and, and hopefully even more. Oh, that's awesome. Well, he got more money from the Heat than me already, but we're not going to talk. We're not going to talk about. Not going to talk about that. Not takes, career earnings. Takes sip. <laughs> it's close. Already? But you know, you know, like a four-year deal, yeah. nine days. Yeah. Wait yeah. a second. What? Well, it's like back in the day. Back in the day, like if you were making fifteen, like you were in the top like five percent. That's what I'm saying. You were in the top oh, so five. Now they make it 30, 40, 50, 50 million a 50 year. Million. Like back that's in like, the day. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, yeah. no, it's all good. I mean, we. That's what well, it the was generations. Before, generations we, like the dudes that do. were like right before us. Yeah. Like. Think about that. Like, Scottie Pippen was winning all the champ. We saw that in uh, The Last Dance. Scottie Pippen was winning everything and as a nine-time All-Star making $2.1 2 2 million, million. million yeah. dollars. You know, but that was just the time. But now, was, yeah. you know, like, but, yeah, Jimmy, yeah, he probably make him more. He close. And his four-year deal, he signed with the Heat. He about $25 million away from my career. Oh, well, <laughs> he gonna get, he's, he's probably trying to get that extension already. Right. So y'all want to run this back a couple more times? <laughs> I'm cool. I The one thing I learned about him, though, like, during that entire run that I actually – my respect level went up so, so high. It wasn't what he was doing between the lines. It was like the way in which he was handling the media, mm. the things he would say, the way in which he carried himself. It was, Channing's reconnecting. It was, it was different. Mm. Like there was like a confidence to him that like, what, that surprised you? You knew that obviously, like you understood that you saw that. Yeah. But like there was ways in which like he would answer some questions and it would just be like, like, we're going to win game six because of this. Right. Or this is what, and I'm just like, we're going to win? Like, wait a minute, he, 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 he sounded like a lead. Do you know what it was? But that's different. And you know this, when you, and you watch the transition of a guy learning mm -hmm. to then taking that step to being a leader, right? And I think that's what I saw in Miami with him was that he was speaking from a leadership role. And then you would hear guys like Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero be like, yeah, well, Jimmy said right. that we're going to be all right. So yeah. we're going to be all right. right. <laughs> we're yeah, going to be all right. And it was like, that was, the, that was the part that I noticed was just the leadership. He yeah. had turned from, like, proving himself and trying to lead like he did in Minnesota, but those guys weren't receptive to it because they weren't trying to win the same way he mm -hmm. was. Then going to Philly, you know, however that transpired, he was the most important player. You saw what happened when he left there. And then he goes to Miami, and there's a bunch of dudes that are like, we're looking for a leader. Right. And he spoke like a leader. He did. Right? Not arrogant, not, not like trash talk, but just very confident and matter of fact that we believe in each other. I've said that these guys are great. And it was just like, was that a transition that you saw from him? Or was it like, did you pick I, I up on like that I feel like that was like... Whoa. Yeah, no, I think we all watched the, the, the evolution of Jimmy Butler, right? Yeah. Okay, so even you. World. Yeah, I mean, okay. I've, I've, you know, like watching him from obviously Marquette to getting drafted. I remember when Jimmy got drafted. Jimmy got drafted the last pick in the first round. He yeah. was the 30th pick. And I remember thinking like, oh, man, dang, good for Jimmy. Yeah, good for, good good for Jimmy. Good for Jimmy. <laughs> I'm glad so Jimmy got in there, like, because he wasn't like that kind of player. But yeah. I watched it, you know, I watched his. He started off as a defensive player. Then he would play at first. Then he started off as a defensive player. And I just watched his, you know, his rise. And when I got to Chicago, what I seen was, and Jimmy's confident. And I always say, confidence comes from your work. Yeah. Jimmy, confidence comes from no one is going to work harder than me. Mm -hmm. I would be damned if someone would work harder than me. So his confidence comes from, he know that he, you know, what I mean, like he know, okay, this guy got this and he got that. Maybe I can't do that. But I know I got something that he don't get right in here, and the, and, the, and the, what the work that I put in. So that's why he feels like in his mind, Jimmy's the great. He's the best player in the world. Yeah. You can't tell Jimmy Butler he's not the best player in the world, right? And not now. from an arrogant standpoint, because like he's, yeah. Yeah. he's yeah. the best version of himself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so he spoke. He spoke that way, and he had a lot of young guys, you know, that he was dependent on. To I mean, they look at their team, you know, yeah. you got Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero and uh, Kendrick Nunn. They play a big role, but you got these young guys. 
that you're trying to take to NBA Finals versus LeBron James and <laughs> Anthony Davis and the Lakers, like Rondo and like these guys, like they shouldn't even have a chance. Yeah. If you look at it on paper, but Jimmy spoke that confidence into them. Obviously, you know, led by the leader, you know, Eric Spoelstra and UD as well. But Jimmy spoke that confidence into his guys, and they believed and. I mean, they got, and, they and, had a what, chance. and what's crazy, too, the last part I'll say is that it never was from a place of arrogance, and it was never from a place of, oh, we're better than them, and, like, like talking trade. He never gave them, like, bulletin board material, right? It was just everybody kind of watched him, like, even from the Lakers side, I don't want to speak from them, but just from, like, the media side or, like, the other team side, you look at him like, yo, he, they really believe in themselves. Like, that's and it. it. And it wasn't, like, it was bulletin board material, but it was from a place of, like, if you don't go out and do your job, you will lose. Yeah. Because they actually believe in what they're saying. They're not just talking to talk. You yeah. know, he, Jimmy just made it hard not to want to root for him. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it was awesome. But, um, but your guy, UD, was amazing when he took over that huddle. Yeah. He lost it. Whew. That was fun. He um, said he lost it. He <laughs> lost it. I was like, <laughs> he said he that lost was it. like James Jones. Champ. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Champ. What was it like, like having during Champ those and James, uh, Champ and UD on the same team? Oh wait, Champ, UD, Shane Battier, uh, man, Ray <laughs> Allen, like bro. Y'all had some, y'all had some like buttoned up vets. Man, right? we had, listen, we had some real grown. Grown man. man. Like, you know, like real, I mean, like it, on a plane, you know, like you guys know, we're on a plane sometimes, it's multiple things going on on the plane right Yeah. Now. Up next on Road Trippin'. And we had like, we had to put in a rule, like yo, anybody who lose, I want my money in 48 hours. But a lot of times on our plane ride, we would sit down and have conversations that you don't normally have. Yeah. Like, let's sit down and talk about money. Okay, yeah. what are you guys doing with your money? James yeah. Jones was somebody who did his own finances. Yeah. So, like, we sat down and had adult conversations. It wasn't just always playing cards or always listening to music or whatever. It's sometimes we had real adult conversations on that team. And it was, man, I loved it. I loved being able to soak all that knowledge up. Rashard Lewis was on the team. You know, another yeah. vet. Like, yeah. we had some real dope I, vets. I was, I was I, honestly, so... I was so mad. Okay, let me not afraid mad. So uh, Fisdale calls me, right? I just finished in uh, Utah, had a solid year there, kind of re got my body healthy or whatever. Fisdale called me and was like, this was the same year that Brown was a free agent. He was like, hey, Richard, man, like, we really could use you, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, come and, you know, back up Braun and come. And I'm looking at that. And I look at your roster. Like, I knew Rashard. We were the same, like, year out of high school, McDonald's All-American. You, Bra, I was like, man, that just looks like a fun veteran team, yeah. whatever. Then y'all signed Danny Granger. And then Bra <laughs> <laughs> No, no, shout out Danny's my guy. But I'm saying, then y'all signed Danny Granger. And I was like, damn. And then Braun left. And I was like, you know how mad I would have been if I would have signed there and then Braun would have up and left. Right. And so I ended up going to where the where the hell did I? I went to Dallas. But like just watching your team from afar, like there was like conversations of like, hey, you can come be a backup, like veteran minimum guy. And it was like, you guys look like you just had such a good veteran group. That's why I felt bad for Mario Chalmers, right? Yeah, That's why I yeah. felt bad for him. But y'all y'all look like y'all, not fun in a way that like was like the Cleveland fun that was different. Right. It yeah. was more of like it was fun from different. like you learned a lot. Yeah. You know what it was? <laughs> it was I'm glad different. you brought up Mario Chalmers. So like the one thing is too, when you got a veteran group like that, that means these guys has made a lot of money from the game of basketball. Yeah. So their pockets is a little. And so when you're gambling on a plane, it's a different level of gambling. Mm -hmm. So Mario. Will you, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because you guys all know what that means, people like me, we don't know what that means. So what does that mean? Well, okay, what's so a different level of gambling? Playing games are uh, bure or um, what's the, the other game? game? Uh, guts. Guts. Oh, guts. Guts is right? dumb. These, these games, bure and guts. So you know, these games start off very friendly. Hey, twenty dollars in a pot. Everybody put in. Hey, hundred dollars in a pot. Hey, two hundred. It just go. But when you're playing with guys like Ray Allen that have been making money since he got game, when you're playing with <laughs> Rashard Lewis that have been making money the one since he's coming out of high school, in NBA, yeah. right? when you're playing with LeBron James, who, you know, you, we all know, when you're playing with, <laughs> I got a little coin, you know, when you're playing with these veteran guys and you like Mario Chalmers and you're getting beat over the head, and it's like, and we had, like, we had to put in a rule, like, yo, anybody who lose, I want my money in 48 hours. But no, hours. but you okay? So well, I, what's we don't, that money? No, tell it's them. not twenty dollars. No, God. What? So Boo Ray is a game that like the legendary <laughs> stories as our numbers between like on a total plane flight like real idiots between fifty <laughs> and hundred grand like super stupid. Yeah. So funny story. My trainer with the Nets, oh. he said that on a trip from New York to L.A. because he used to be a trainer for the Knicks. Like John Starks won like fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars and was like. 
yo, like, I'm going to go buy a brand new Range Rover. But this is why the gambling gets a little out of control is because everyone knows, oh, we got a six-hour flight back. Right. So, like, it don't matter if you go on a West Coast trip. Like, you might win all the money there. Right. But, like, he said that, like, every bit of the trip working their way back, then ultimately going back out east, he lost it all. And he said he wasn't no good for, like, a yeah. week. It's the worst team camaraderie that I've ever been a part of. <laughs> Like, it was at a point where me and UD had a meeting with each other. We were trying to get out. It was like we were in a game. <laughs> we was like, how do we get out of this? Because I'm getting my, I, I literally, one year, I literally lost for two months straight. My oh. financial advisor called me and says, it's something I need to worry about because yeah. I'm seeing a lot of deposits come out. <laughs> <laughs> Cash deposits. Well, okay, okay. N not you, because I don't want you to tell, like, your business, wink, but I want you to tell <laughs> what's the most you saw somebody lose in the game, and you don't have to say that person's name. Most I've seen someone lose uh, in like one game. Are you talking about just a, a total? just like a trip, like a trip? Like if you're going like not one, like one hand, because you know I know we yeah. can get it. Correct. I mean, we in a hundred thousand. It's easy. Like it's it's easy. In one trip. Listen, oh, yeah. let me tell you something. And then like when I was in Chicago, this is another one about Chicago. So I went to Chicago. Me and Jimmy. Jimmy don't gamble. I don't. I'm not a big gambler, but I do it for camaraderie. So yeah. me and Jimmy, we was going on a two week two week road trip, and Rondo is a shark. Shark. He a gambler. Rondo is one of those guys that he could probably count all the cards. Like he ain't. He shouldn't play. He's too smart. So we were Even gambling with cards? them. Yes. And Jimmy <laughs> said, Yeah. Jimmy said, D, how much money are you gonna bring? I said, Are we going on a two week trip? You know, man. I feel like I'm gonna bring a lot of money. I was like, I'm gonna bring fifty thousand. Yeah. Okay. I can lose fifty thousand for this trip. I mean, not lose, but you know. Yeah, I yeah. Lose. Like you're not. See, going... that's why you and I are different on that game cube. <laughs> I I think I'm gonna win it. Yeah, but you're, you gotta you're... know, like I can lose this and be okay and sleep good at yeah, night. Yeah, it's like Vegas. You, you know, only right. take what you only you're take comfortable with. You, you lose. Like, right. Not so I was can... like, this is, let's it last me two weeks because when you gamble, you don't just gamble on a plane. Sometimes you gamble in a hotel room. Sometimes you get like late at night. Like we when we you when go Brian, to New Orleans. You go to yeah, New Orleans. Go you to go. Casino. You gamble a lot. Yeah. And let me tell you, I lost fifty thousand dollars within two hours on the plane ride. Oh. We didn't even get to the city we were going to, and you know who else lost it? Jimmy Butler lost as well. So we, that was our. Uh, we was like, well, thank you guys. I hope y'all enjoyed us for the year. Uh, we are gonna go over here and sit in our seats. You want to know one of the Cardinals? Said, like, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, one of the Cardinals. Said, Channing, you can jump in because Channing never. Channing's gambled. back. Channing never gambled. <laughs> Channing ain't gambling. Channing, Lauren Channing, got his money. Dog. Oh. Yo, Jason, I, Conn, I Jay, did gamble. Do you know Listen. what the worst thing is? Because there's rules. There's so many like random rules that people don't know. Jason Collins did this one time. Like we were playing poker. He came in, put his money, pull his money out, played a couple hands. Then would put his money back in in his pocket. Mm -hmm. Then like when we go around again, you got Annie up again. He would take it. And we're like, dog, just leave your money <laughs> out. Like, leave your money, my, out, leave your money out. <laughs> this dude, he won. A, like he played for probably like. 30, 40 minutes, but then won, like, maybe one of the bigger hands. And it was only probably, like, let's say, like, five grand, right? So he won that. And he was like, all right, guys, I'm out. And I was just like, wait, wait, no, no. Tell no, him. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You Once don't get you to do in, that. You in. You can't get out. Mm -hmm. You can win big no, and be like, oh, I just won. You got to gamble now until all that money is gone. You cannot yeah. <laughs> walk away from the game once you start gambling. And that's why I said I want it out. How much money... Have has somebody get like, hey, listen, hey, let me, I'm just gonna let, let me get five, let me get ten. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? Listen, 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 what does that mean? Because like, like, if you're out of your cash, <laughs> you're out, you're out of your out. cash, and it's two hours into the flight, hey, hey, bro, you hey, gotta, hey, bro. you gotta keep playing. Yeah, hey, bro, let me get fifteen hundred. <laughs> So now, look, now you like this, though. You like, from your phone, you like, all right. You, this owe me. Richard you got owe names. Me 1500. You got putting your iPhone. <laughs> Ali owe me 1200. You know what I mean? Because they come notes. In. Yeah, and then you be like, yo, hey, let me get that 1500 back that yeah. you borrowed from me on the plane. But then it gets to the point where now you're gambling with my money and we gambling against each other. And then, I don't yeah, like that's this. the I don't part. Like that's the part that some dudes don't like to do it because if I give you five grand and I'm up 20 right. and all of a sudden you're you, using my five grand to take my money to take my money or get your money back or to yeah. take my money because it can go that way. You can be all the way down, then the cards can change and all of a sudden you can go from being down 20 to up 40 in an Listen, hour. Big bank take little bank all day. Mm -hmm. And when you're playing with guys that have big, big bank. banks, <laughs> you should not play. When LeBron James was one of the best card players because it doesn't matter how much he lose, he is patient. Yeah. He could keep taking beats on the head. <laughs> yeah. But when that big pot line up, and now, it's, now it's 100,000 in the pot. Now you nervous. And he ain't as nervous. Because you know what? He got a lot more than everybody else at the table. So he not nervous. <laughs> you getting out. She's like, nope, I ain't no, got that. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I'll take that money.